Hello and welcome to the Kimono Spark Highlight Show. This week we'll recap select races from Saturday, March 11, as well as Sunday, February 12. The two-day race carnival saw a total of 18 races being contested. Saturday's feature race was the Hotline Stakes, while the main event on Sunday was the Sir Howard Stakes, both of which are prep events ahead of the start of the Triple Crown Series. Let's begin our recap of this weekend's racing, beginning with race 3 from Saturday. This was named in honor of the 2018 Hotline Stakes winner, Band of Gold. Seven faced the starter going 1,000 meters round. They're off. California Gold double the cash and Jack Daniel, the back markers early. She's a mirage, has gone right through now to get that lead as they run away toward the half mile. She's a mirage out in front. Strike smart, making ground. California Gold recovering on the outside in the yellow on the rail. That's a digital light. May Sellington races next, possibly six or seven off the lead as they blast past the three. Double the cash is a further four lengths in behind and a Jack Daniel last. They're all in a line as they're coming into the lane and it's She's a Mirage at the top of it, adjusts the leader. Strike Smart now beginning an attack on the outside. She's a Mirage being driven flat to the board. Strike Smart moving through and Strike Smart now picks it up from on the rail that She's a Mirage. Strike Smart out in front. She's a Mirage now beginning some sort of a rally as they flash past the furlong pole, but they still have to catch this a Strike Smart in the hands of Richard Loon and they're inside the final 16th and it is Strike Smart continuing to hold. May Sellington running on late, too late. Strike Smart beats May Sellington. She's a Mirage, digital light. Jack Daniel is fifth. A rare victory for jockey Richard Lunan sees a strike smart capturing the day's third event by half of a length. In a field of native bred three year old maiden special weight entries, Strike Smart completed the 1,000 meter trip in 1 minute 3 seconds flat. Race 4 saw veteran rider O'Neill Mullings aboard the 6 to 5 favorite Casual Affair. The five-horse vampire rejection was a late non-starter in what was a three-year-old and up optional claiming event. Ready for a start. They're off on racing right away. Casual Affair blast into an early lead right against the rail. So Casual Affair just on the lead. Right there too, that's Milkman, John P. right beside them. A two-length gap before we come to the trio of Fabulosity. Biblical Legend and Bold Sammy. They pass the four and head towards the three. And making the running, that is a casual affair. Just a leader from John P. right there too, right against the rail. The stable companion, Milkman, four lengths away before we come to Fabulosity. Then comes a Biblical Legend cutting the corner that and coming around, that's Bold Sammy there at the top of the lane, three across the track. Right there, Milkman, Casual Affair, John, John P. Also in the mix, they're coming to the furlong pole. And Milkman now strikes the front from John P. Trying to rally on the outside. It's Milkman in front of John P. Milkman begins to stretch the lead. John P. still chasing in earnest. It's Milkman in front, large and in charge. A terrific tubbing. Foster has Milkman rolling. And Milkman rolls away by about five lengths from John P. Then comes Bold Sammy. And a biblical legend. Milkman, partnered by terrific Tevin Foster, secured his spot inside the winner's enclosure. The seven year old Greg Gelding covered the 1,000 meter round trip in one minute, three and one fifth of a second. The Rani Maharani was the fifth event. This one was named in honor of the 1999 Hotline Stakes winner. The Boston Philip Parchment was aboard Burning Valor for the trainer, owner and breeder, Carl Cat Anderson. They're off. A first born staggers out, along with Mr. Senator. They race at the back. Hot Stepper got a good start, so to Burning Valor, Wayne's Princess and Life is Life follow closely as they're fairly bunched on the lead running now toward the six. And Burning Valor picks up that lead, Firstborn moving through on the outside as they lead the six, and Firstborn looks to have the head in front. Wayne's Princess has now moved swiftly down against the rail, tucked in between them. That's a Burning Valor as they run to the five. Life is Life is a length and a half in behind them as they lead the five. Hot Stepper races up next on the run toward the half mile. A Roaring Thunder right alongside. Beautiful Moon races next, and Mr. Senator outsped and last. The field have left the half mile. 
They're on the bend for home. They're arriving now at the uh, 7.16th, and it's Burning Valor just in front by the Fleur of Nostril. Wayne's Princess sticking to the task on the reel. Firstborn is now three lengths back. Life is life in the red house to pick up Roaring Thunder and Hot Step are now form a line of four with those. In behind them, that's Mr. Senator and a beautiful moon not shining at the back as the field are about to turn into the top of the lane. It's a Burning Valor, just the leader. Wayne's Princess left in behind. Here is Hot Step are now launching a charge on the outside but Burning Valor is drifting all over the place running green. They run toward the final furlong and it is Burning Valor with the lead. Hot Stepper now asked to close the gap down against the rail. Wayne's Princess running a bit flat footed. Life is life left back in the center but up front it is a Burning Valor. Hot Stepper continues the challenge down against the rail. A Burning Valor and Philip Parchment fend them off to beat Hot Stepper then Wayne's Princess. Life is life roaring thunder. The even money favorite Burning Valor covered 1500 meters and completed the win by one and a quarter length. Hot stopper Wayne's Princess and Life is Life completed the top four. The seventh event was named in honor of Potipu. This was a non restricted overnight allowance for thoroughbreds three years old and up. Seven faced the starter with Money Monster, sent off as a three to five favorite. Two turns ahead of them, they're ready, they're off. Almost perfect start and outbid advice for that early lead. As they run toward the mile, Shaboom the Grey, he tucked in between horses. Sister and Treasure is right up there on the front end as well. As they move into that clubhouse turn, an outbidder hugs the rail and the lead as they go passing the, the mile. The string treasure races up, accompanied by the grey shiboom as they run to the seven. Two and a half lengths back to Money Monster, Marquesas racing on the rails, so John a half a length down, and last of all, it's a crimson save for a late kick. They're onto that back stretch and approaching the final six furlongs, and Outbidder continues her attempt to go all the way. Toward the outside, that shiboom. They leave the six furlong points. Sister and Treasure backing out in third. Joined now by Money Monster on the go down against the rail. Four lengths back to Sir John Marquesas in the pink race is next and Crimson maintains last. They've left the 5 eighths pole and run now toward the final half of a mile on their exit of the back stretch. And it is Outbidder and Omar Walker El Champo who lead from Money Monster. Shiboom fading back a bit in third. Sister and Treasure now on the hunt and beginning to go as they leave the half mile. A gap of summer three lengths opens up to Marquesas moving on the rail. Sir John in between horses and Crimson now getting closer as they're about to arrive at the three. They go past it and Outbidder maintains that lead. Money Monster on the attack. Sistrin Treasure also creeping closer and cutting the corner. These are the three main contenders as they come into the lane in the Puddy Poo. Outbidder in between horses. Down against the rail, Sistrin Treasure and Money Monster kicking in. These three abreast. They drive up inside the final 316th. Outbidder is putting up one hell of a fight. Over against the rail, it's Sistrin Treasure. And Sistrin Treasure possibly points. Money Monster now launching his late Charge. Watch Crimson down against the rail. It's Sister in Treasure from Money Monster and the fast finishing Crimson, but Sister in Treasure and Dane Dawkins. He's devastating. He has a triple. Sister in Treasure wins it over Crimson. Then Money Monster outbid her. Sister in Treasure, partnered by champion rider Dane Dawkins, dismissed rivals to win the day's seventh by two and a half lengths. A one to two finish it was for trainer Gary Sobrati as Crimson, the Mount of Radish Roman, came home second. The hotline stakes was the day's ninth and final. A ten horse field saw Royal Ash sent off as a seven to five favorite. Here's the race call as the native bred three year old fillies covered 1200 meters. They're off. Fair start. Acknowledge me shows speed along with Duracell rushing up to join and Duracell in the orange cap now shoots through to get it from Acknowledge me speedy here racing alongside Royal Ash Bazinga races in the center of horses volatility out wide all for love races ahead of Bosi then Bella Bella and she's my hedge fund in the green at the back they slip past the half mile and run away now toward the 716th. Can they catch Duracell out in front? Speedy here now going in chase, dropping down into second. Royal Ash is steadied there in third. Volatility moving up on the outside. Right on the rail, that's Acknowledge Me. These are followed up by Bazinga, then All for Love. 
A Bossy race is up next toward the back of the field. That's a Bella Bella, and she's my hedge fund as they turn for home in the hotline stakes. A quarter of a mile to catch Duracell. Can they catch the filly? She's out in front. Here now is the grey Royal Ash arriving on the scene. It's Duracell now being pressed a bit by Royal Ash continuing to creep closer all the while. Speedy here is near the rail with Acknowledge Me and Volatility, but Duracell continues to dig in inside the final 16th. Here is Royal Ash now with a late charge. It's a Duracell hanging tough in the end. It's the hotline stakes. Duracell, a brave ride and a brave run. Wins it from Royal Ash, then all for love, volatility. Acknowledge me, his fifth. The fully charged Duracell managed to outstay her rivals to win by three-quarter of a length. Conditioned by Patrick Fung and ridden by Bibito Harvey, Duracell covered herself in glory as she docked 1 minute 15 seconds flat, going 1,200 metres. It's now time to head to a break on the Kimana Spark Highlight Show. When we return, we'll recap the race meet from Sunday, March 12, where the day's feature was the Sir Howard Stakes. Sunday was another thrilling day at the park and saw nine races on offer. Race 3 is where we'll begin our recap. This was a three-year-old and up claiming event named in honor of the 2009 Sir Howard Stakes winner, Naval Commander. Nes Pierce was a late non-starter. Not already they're off. All of them came out well. Agao Sumai is running quickly for that lead, give me the light, and Don Almighty right there on the premises. A Denby Life is widest of them all in the orange sleeves, and Denby Life now scoots through, gets that lead from Hargao Sumai and Give Me the Light three lengths back and are racing together. Donald Almighty is another length and three parts behind those, and the Sunshine Cat not ready to shine as they have left the three and run toward the 5 16th. Denby Life, skittering along on that lead, opens up five or more lengths. Coming into the lane, it is a Denby Life in control at the top of it. The rider now changing the hold and asking for everything. Give me the like, trying to close up. On the outside, that's a Don Almighty. Over on the rail, it's Hagao Sumai. But it's a Denby Life who continues to show fleet of foot inside the final furlong. A Denby Life and the female Samantha Fletcher hold the lead. Hagao Sumai now bearing down on the inside. But it's a Denby Life driven flat to the boards by Samantha. Samantha and Denby Life possibly just hangs on from a fast finishing Hagao Sumai. Then Don Almighty give me the light and Sunshine Cat. Competently ridden by female jockey Samantha Fletcher, Denby Life managed to edge the even money favorite Hagao Sumai by a head. The winning time for the Patrick Fung conditioned chestnut mare was 1 minute and 2 and 2 fifths of a second, going 1,000 meters round. Race 5 was a maiden-conditioned race for native-bred three-year-old fillies. Kismet was the most fancied entry. The one-horse tequila flight was a late scratch. They're ready, they're off. He's stylish. Just a shade slowly out with Juby Wap Wap. As they make their way running now toward the six, Lion Charmer showing speed on the rail. Toward the outside, that's a Bella Soul. Atomic Energy right there too, as they make their way down the back stretch. Lion Charmer now joined by Kismet as they leave the five. Bella Soul two lengths in behind them and running third ahead of Atomic Energy. They make their way now toward the final half of a mile. Wow How is the one racing right against the rail, overtaken by Answer My Prayers, a gap of six or more to It's a Plummy racing with She's Stylish and Juby Wap Wap left out of it. On the run, passing the 3-8 spool, Kismet on the outside, just the leader, Lion Charmer sticking to the task. Here is Bella Soul wound up for a run as they slip past the final 5-16th in behind them, Atomic Energy, but they're coming into the lane. It is Lion Charmer and uh, Kismet locking horns up front. Bella Soul now asked to charge up on the outside. Atomic Energy makes ground against the rail. These four, the main ones, wow, how just in behind the front rank, but they run toward the furlong pole. Kismet just the leader from a lion charmer atomic energy now making ground against the rail wow how beginning to close widest of them all this is a heck of a thrilling finish and now wow how snatches the lead on the terrific devin foster and they will win it over kismet close between lion charmer atomic energy bella soul looks to be fifth 
Walhall piloted by terrific Kevin Foster for trainer Anthony Babanunis landed Sunday's fifth event. Kismet, Lion Charmer, Atomic Energy and Bella Sauer completed the top five. The Sir Howard Stakes was the day's feature event. The six-horse Ridge Liner was a late non-starter. This meant of a field of five native-bred colts and geldings were sent off to cover 1,200 meters. Six furlongs thereof. Curl is known toward the back early with Kid and El Afortunada tussle and now El Afortunada grabs the lead. Big guy in the sky goes in chase, cutting that lead to a half a length and heads apart now as they go flashing past the five. A gap of four to Kindred Spirit and Wizkid running together, Curlin's Noon at the back. They're arriving at the half mile and go spinning into the turn and big guy in the sky now grabs the lead and slips away by two lengths in an attempt to steal the show. As they leave the 716th, Ella Fortunado hustled up in second, a break of some three back to a ridden Wizkid. Kindred Spirit is further back, and last of all remains Curlin's Noon, 5 sixteenths to run. Coming into the top of the lane, big guy in the sky, continuing to dictate terms. Here is El Afortunado now in the red cap, asked to cut into that lead. Big guy in the sky continues to lead. El Afortunado now putting in a serious effort. Whiz kid toward the outside in the orange, but they're driving up toward the final furlong. It's big guy in the sky on the rail. El Afortunado now hitting top stride, and El Afortunado snatches the lead from big guy in the sky this is the sir howard stakes and it's all over el afortunado and awesome anthony thomas win by three or more of a big guy in the sky then whiskey kindred spirit curling's noon the one to nine favorite el afortunado partnered by awesome anthony thomas for trainer anthony nunes landed this year's edition of the sir howard stakes posting splits of 23 3 and 47 2 the handsome Bay Colt won by three and a half lengths in a time of one minute, 14 and four fifths of a second. The day's ninth and final was named in honor of the 2014 Sir Howard Stakes winner, talented Tony Kay. From a field of 12, the Good Witch was the punter's favorite and was sent off as a three to two favorite. 1,000 meters straight. They're off. Oopa duper comes away, already drifting toward the stands. Rum with me right there in the middle also. The Goodwitch in the blue silks races nearest to us under the stand fence as they sort themselves out. Further back to Big Big Daddy, more toward dead center of the racetrack. The head cornerstone is there too, along with on a ruly boss. But it's still wide open. Press conference is also traveling well right alongside the Goodwitch. The other ones nearest the stand, Super Duper in the red, may just have the overall advantage. Charming Beauty is asked to make ground under the stick on the far side, the head cornerstone and on Aruli Boss, but Super Duper holds the lead and claims the fence. The Goodwitch in behind him, press conference now revved up and beginning to accelerate. Ring Charmer trying to close up, it's a Super Duper as they run toward the furlong pole, now giving way to press conference. Ring Charmer now coming with a run, but it is press conference driven flat to the boards and press conference breaks Ring Charmer, Super Duper could be Big Big Daddy over Rum With Me. With the good witch failing to get going, jockey Bebito Harvey and trainer Cal Anderson made a showing with press conference. The five-year-old chestnut gelding finished ahead of Ring Charmer, Super Duper, Big Big Daddy and Rum With Me, all of whom completed the top five. As we recap another exciting weekend of racing, it was highlighted by Duracell's victory in the Hotline Stakes on Saturday. Meanwhile, on Sunday, Ale Afortunado landed the Sir Howard Stakes. This has been another edition of the Kimanos Park Highlight Show. I'll see you next time.